guys, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. You know, with the winter months coming, one of my favorite times of year to fish is late fall for trophy caliber smallmouth bass. Not just a great time to catch trophy smallmouth, but a great time to catch giant walleye, big musky, big pike, any time of fish, you know, no matter where you're at in the country, this period from fall into winter is a great time to catch a true giant fish of whatever it is that you're chasing because they're feeding up for the winter months. This is one of the times they'll have the heaviest weight of the entire year on their bodies and it's a good time to go after them and honestly there's not that many people out on the water when half the country is out hunting. A lot of people are watching football, the lakes are open and they're ready for you to go out and catch a few fish. You might have to dress appropriately but you can get out there and catch some big fish. And that leads me into talking about one of the topics that I love to talk about uh, because this is one of my favorite fish. It's the Cisco, guys. The Cisco, otherwise known as Lake Herring. I realize for you guys down south, you don't have them down there. They're more in the upper, uh, upper half of the country, the Great Lakes states, the upper northeast part of the country. All of Canada has them. Uh, but the reason I love Cisco so much is because they are like the best forage fish to grow big fish. It's the same thing with the big largemouth lakes that are eating, you know, where those largemouth are eating trout. I mean, it's, it's no different. They are just a great forage species and they lead to giant fish. So I love to target those lakes that have Cisco in them because I know the chances of catching a giant is pretty good. And that's what today's episode is about. We're going to talk about Cisco and the five things that you need to know about Cisco to catch more fish. So the first thing is exactly what I just mentioned. It's what eats the Cisco. And that is pretty much every major predator. You got your bass species, you got your walleye, you got your toothy critters like muskie and pike, you got lake trout. Any of those species love to eat cisco because cisco are such a good forage species. They're a uh, larger size fish, they have a lot of fat in them, and they can grow to be large. And it has been found that the lakes that have cisco require those predator species to eat less because they expel less energy because they get more energy out of a single cisco so that's the first thing you got to kind of understand what's chasing them so that you know if one of the fish that you're targeting is preying on cisco so that was the number one thing you got to know a little bit about cisco the second thing has to do with when they spawn they are completely opposite from other fish they will move up out of the depths in these super cool temperatures when you're dropping from fall into winter when you start getting into that 50 or low low 50s but more into the upper to mid 40s and down into the low 40s you will get the cisco to coming up out of the depths up into shallow water to spawn specifically looking for rocky areas generally in anywhere from three to eight feet of water is kind of the prime zone uh, most of that activity happens during the night period which makes you know the eve right as you're moving into the evening period and the late morning or all night prime times to catch a giant predator fish feeding on those cisco uh, it's it requires sometimes up here in the north country you know some definite hard work because it is going to be frigid evenings and nights but that's what you're looking for that's one reason rocks up in the north country are so good in the fall is because that's where the cisco are so that's the second thing the third thing is what do they feed on well they feed on kind of a little bit of everything they will eat zooplankton they'll eat insect larvae uh, they'll eat like mayflies so they move around quite a bit based on what their food source is. So, you know, if they're primarily feeding on mayfly hatches, then you might, might want to be looking more along where the mayfly are coming out of. Some of those mud bottom areas from super deep water. It just kind of depends on what the hatch is or where the, the, you know, the zooplankton is at in the water body at that time. So they move all over the place. It's really hard to stay on top of the Cisco 
throughout the year because they kind of hear one minute and they're gone and they could be across the lake, but they are generally in very big schools. So you can graph them. That's one nice thing about it. You can see the big graphs of Cisco, uh, uh, you know, the big pods of Cisco on your graph, which makes them easier to target because of that. They're in such big schools. The fourth thing has to do with, you know, them being a really good indicator of lake health. And the reason for that is they do not tolerate low oxygen levels. And if a, and if a lake is too warm, they don't tolerate that either. They're a cold water species. So they, they, because of that, are kind of looked at as a good indicator of lake health. You know, I've, I've had a house in northern Indiana that had Cisco and the Cisco population really plummeted uh, once the lake temperature started coming up and the lake got infected and got uh, not infected, but had Eurasian milfoil come and get introduced into it. And it just seemed like the water quality really dropped because they started spraying the lake and there were a bunch of things going on with that. And there were a bunch of really bad Cisco, uh, you know, uh, Cisco kills because of it. So it's, Something that a lot of, uh, you know, the lake managers will watch to see what the overall health of the fishery is. Because if the Cisco population takes a big hit, you may have had trophy caliber game fish as well that are going to take a pretty big hit from that as well. So it's something that's watched closely and it's a good uh, indicator of lake health. And, you know, going along with that leads me into my fifth thing, which has to do with them being cold water species. So, you know, if you're not fishing during a really cold period, so really early spring, really late fall or winter months uh, or through the ice, you need to be looking for the coldest water in the lake. So generally what that means is they're going to be right down near the thermocline uh, because that's where they prefer to be. So if you want to target some of the biggest fish in the lake that you're fishing, if you've got Cisco in that lake, you probably during the summer months need to be fishing down near that thermocline because that's where the Cisco are going to be and the biggest fish in that lake, uh, your you know muskies, pike, walleye, lake trout, bass are going to be down around that thermocline as well eating on those Cisco's, which can get quite large. I mean, they can get up to about 20 inches. The majority of the adult population is like in that 12 to I'll say 15 or 16 inches which is why if a, you know, a seven pound smallmouth eats one, they don't need to eat that much. But that's where you're gonna find your seven pound smallmouth is down near those Cisco. So guys, this is the best time of year if you live in the North Country to get out and target those lakes that have Cisco uh, over the next month and a half, you're gonna see those Cisco come up you know, and just hit the shallows to start their spawning process. And there will be giant fish of all species following them into those locations. So take this as an opportunity to get out. If you get a nice fall day, uh, I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. Uh, anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for new tips and tricks that come out on a daily basis. And uh, thanks for watching.